Tom, a major development here today, Tom Countryman from the U.S. delegation spoke and basically laid it right on the line saying, we need more time if we plan to get this right. What was he saying? Well, he was not what he said, but what he did. He basically pulled the plug on the process. Uh, when I say pull the plug in the process, they're going to be coming back again, I think. I'm not sure uh, when or where. Uh, but he basically said, you just can't do it. Now, this has been our complaint all along. Um, I don't know what the other delegates or how the other delegates are going to react to this, but pretty much when a country like the United States uh, says we can't do it, that's, I think, pretty much the ball game. You never say never at the UN, but uh, uh, this, this, this uh, process, this treaty at this moment uh, is, is one of those walking dead men. It may be revived, I never want to say never, but right now it seems to be it ends for this, for, for this effort. Well, and wasn't Countryman basically saying there will not be consensus if that's what you're asking for? Uh, that's what he seemed to say. And I think this is a very, very good move on the part of the United States. Uh, we've been push pushing the United States on the civilian firearms issue. Uh, this puts that issue issue off. Uh, and there are also, this is something that the viewers need to understand. Not only is there the issue of civilian firearms, not only is there the issue of ammunition, but there are innumerable other, uh, not technical in issues, but substantive issues in, the, in this treaty. Uh, export, import issues, what's the definition of transit, what's the, uh, what is the, the application or, or the need for end user or end use certificates. Uh, what, what is the role of the European Union in this? There are, there are probably at least eight or nine substantive issues uh, that need to be resolved. So if the treaty doesn't go anywhere, what does that mean? What will happen now? It'll probably go back to the General Assembly in late October, and the General Assembly will make a decision as to how they're going to proceed, whether it'll be a, a, a further meeting uh, in 2013, 2014, uh, we don't know. Uh, there's been some talk about 2014. Uh, one of our preferences is they have uh, uh, several short meetings instead of one long meeting, uh, but that remains to be seen. And again, you know, con Country Main made reference to the preamble, and he was talking about how they, it should reaffirm the sovereign right of states when it comes to laws and practices. Again, probably they are making reference to the Second Amendment. But it's in the preamble still, and what the heck difference will that make? Well, that's true, but that's a battle we're going to hopefully fight again. Mm -hmm. So as you see it right now, the, the, the U.S. basically said this is going nowhere. That's right, and, the, and we say that at, at 11 o'clock uh, Friday the 27th. Right. And I know we got till what, 6 o'clock this afternoon? Yeah, that's correct, 6 o'clock this afternoon. Or they may, they've been known to go farther, but if, if they do pull the plug on this, I don't think they'll go beyond 6 o'clock. You know, and we talked a bit about this late yesterday, but you really get the sense in that room that there's a lot of unhappy people, countries, unhappy with this, this draft that has been distributed. It came out so late. You just can't write law or make policy that way. Again, I, I said yesterday, if, if this was a city council or legislature in the United States Congress, you wouldn't bring out something uh, for, for a vote without people having, having seen it. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. And that's what Moraton tried to do. Uh, it's very typical United Nations. And again, the United Nations process is a very clumsy, opaque process. You just have to see it to believe it. And you've been here, around here long enough to know how amazing it is. What kind of weight do you think the letters from the 51 senators, the impact that might have had on what the U.S. did here today? That's a good question. Uh, I don't want to don't want to analyze the motives of, of, of the U.S. and whether or not they uh, uh, they were listening or or, or, or or not listening, but if indeed uh, it ends the process and indeed uh, uh, they did pull the plug, and again, you never know, uh, indeed if that happened, it was a good move on the part of, of the United States. Whether or not they listened to the letters or they didn't listen to the letters, they did the right thing. And whether or not they listened to you guys when it comes to the Second Amendment and the importance of making sure that it is not included because there's still a lot of people in there talking about um, the civilian ownership being in there. There's a lot of people, countries in there talking about the importance of ammunition and those are really two hot button issues still. And we're going to be back here if we do come back again delivering those messages time and time and time again. Your reaction to what the U.S. said? I was happy. Mm -hmm.
you feel like they're at least listening in some form or fashion? I hope so. NRA News has also just learned, along with the U.S., Russia and Canada and a number of other countries have also just today put the U.N. on notice that they will not support the draft of this treaty. We get an update from Tom Mason. Tom, thanks so much for stopping by the studios because I know there's a lot going on at the U.N. right now, including the fact that Russia, along with a couple of other countries, followed right behind the U.S. and said they cannot support this treaty as it is. Tell us what happened. Well, this is this realization has finally come upon the body, and I think subconsciously it was there two or three days ago, that they just don't, they're just out of time, and they just can't do this. Uh, it's just it just impossible because there really was no text. There's no agreement. They have like nine outstanding issues. Those people reported back. The the, the these little working groups. They reported back and said we haven't that we have no agreement. So not only do you not have agreement, you don't have a final text. It can't get to the capitals. And there's all these unresolved uh, huge issues. But anything specific that Russia said. I mean, I, I what hit me was they talked about how the text is weak, which you just talked about. They said it lacks clear description of measures to prevent arms enter the illicit market, but I also think the fact that Russia came out and said this, we've been talking about, you have at least from early on, that you know Russia might carry on the coattails of the U.S., but they came right out and said, uh-uh, can't fly. Well, the Russians are always very good at diplomacy, and, and, and they weren't going to take a hard stand without, a, without some explanation uh, underneath it, right or wrongly. Uh, the, the, you know, the Russians have, have, have always relied a little bit on the United States, but the fact that they came out and were public on it, came out of the closet, as it were, uh, is, is very significant. What other countries? Can you tell us? Uh, the DPRK, uh, the Democratic Republic of uh, Democratic People's Republic of Korea, North Korea, Canada also made, made these, these statements. And Tom, again today we saw so many people, so many countries in that room very unhappy with the way the president of this conference has handled it, one of them specifically talking about how he's a two-headed man and one of those heads is a man without legs, inferring that he had no balance, he brought no balance to this negotiation process. Um, and I think that's really played an important part on how this has ended up. That's right, and it was so ironic because Maritan uh, spent a lot of time uh, two days ago talking about how this process was a tango. Uh, he, and it was an incredible speech. He went on for 10 minutes describing the Argentinian tango, which is an Argentinian. And then to have somebody come back and say, well, that may be a tango, but you don't have any balance. Mm -hmm. uh, and so th that, that was very, very uh, uh, telling. Martin's style was telling. He's a very aristocratic, uh, very uh, wanting to have subtle conversations. Uh, but, uh, you know, that, that if we can, we can over a glass of wine or something, mm -hmm. maybe you and I, diplomats, we can agree on this, you know, that type of thing. Uh, the irony was that while he might have been a, a superb negotiator that way, he was a terrible manager. I've got to ask you, here you have the UN determined to get this treaty passed, set today as the deadline. What kind of message does that send to its supporters around the world that, you know what, it didn't happen? and you keep blaming our firearms for the problem, and obviously it's a lot deeper than that. That's true, and, 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 you, and you can't blame us for stopping this treaty. Uh, we, of course, were opposed to the treaty, uh, but we don't have any fingerprints on this. So. so is it fair to say it is a done deal? The treaty is over as far as this process right now? Uh, the treaty is over as far as this process right now, I think. Uh, in, 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 in July 27th, uh, you know, 2012, at about 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, uh, it seems to be done. Uh, but it's going to come back. It'll mm -hmm. come back to the General Assembly, and they'll ask that their quote unquote mandate be renewed. That's what the Russians. Yeah, because the Russians talked about, they said the, extend, the, the mandate needs to be extended for two to three weeks. They're talking about in total the negotiation process, yes, adding they, three, yeah, more, three more two, weeks. Two or three it. more weeks. Uh, uh, yeah. it, it's not going to happen in two or three weeks. Uh, th these type of meetings are very complex. You literally have to schedule the room a year ahead. Uh, you've got to get the interpreters. You've got to get a, a budget. This is not a cheap meeting. Uh, the interpreters themselves are incredibly expensive. So the treaty, let's say, is dead on arrival, okay, right now. Um, it goes to the General Assembly. When could you ever see this process kicking up again? Well, you, you will know fairly soon, uh, toward the end of October, early November, the General Assembly, uh, First Committee, and then the General Assembly will make a decision on it. Then they'll start to have, probably start to have meetings. 
Uh, who knows, there could be another prep com in, in February. Your thoughts on why the U.S. took this route, considering you were really concerned earlier this week that they were going to, you know, protect uh, and make sure that ammunition wasn't in it, but that civilian ownership just might slip in there. Um, your reaction when you see what happened today? You think it's because of the election? You think it's because the, the Senate said, you know, they got the votes uh, to keep it from going anywhere? I don't know, but we'll take we'll take it. You know, whether we whether whether it be be clean or dirty, we'll take it. it you know, it was, it was it, you know, it, it's still a victory. Should gun owners be happy about what happened today, or still concerned that this is a UN determined whether this the process has been slowed as they might put it? Um, that this is going to continue, this mission to erode our Second Amendment is not by any means off the table. Gun owners should be both happy and concerned. Happy that, that, it, that it's over, that, that this, we've won this round, so to speak, but concerned because it's going to go on. You know, I'm to ask you about the election, but all the more reason they should take this election in November very serious. Absolutely. It depends on what the next administration, how, what their policies will be toward this when it's a renewed fight.